Maka laka ding dong, people. It is a Saturday mock draft head to head to head. I got the number two pick. I have the best team. I'm sure you'll agree. Leave a comment below. Like, subscribe, smash the subscribe button, and enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Saturday, July 16th. Mock draft episode for the fantasy footballers. Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway with you. Joined, as always, by a collection of deucers. There's three of them. Three of them. Triple Two. deuce. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brooks. Uh, we have a head-to-head-to-head -to -head -to -head mock draft on today's show. Yes. Going to mix it up a little bit. Going to do a full PPR, three wide receiver mock draft over on Sleeper. And if you are watching, youtube.com slash thefantasyfootballers, you can see the draft board. would love to get your feedback. I mean, most of it. Some of it I find rather insulting, but I expect that. I mean, yeah. it's a mock draft. You're supposed to let us have it if yeah. you don't like what, I, we, uh, what we're bringing. I do love the – this is perfect fantasy football. Every time that there's a mock draft, like Andy, you and I just uh, – the last mock draft that we did was a head-to-head. -head. Yeah. So there's only two teams. There's like, who do you like? And it's just so fun to go down and read through the comments and have it be like, Oh, Andy in a landslide. Next one. Jason is not even close. It's like yeah. this is, you know, this is the great part about fantasy football is we all have our opinions, and that's basically all they are right now. They're educated. They're like hypothesis about what we think is going to happen this season, but we get the answers. Like at the end of the year, you'll be like, oh, it was Jason. Jason did have the best team, and it'll be a fact. But in the meantime, you're welcome to have those other opinions. And that's yeah. cool. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a subjective space, right? I mean, you have your favorite players, what you believe about them, and then when you're in a head-to-head -head competitive environment, there's even more juice. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a little bit mm -hmm. more of, uh, are you going to double down on that belief? Are you going to have enough conviction knowing that, you know, the listeners don't share that belief to still take your player? So, um, Oh, you guys are right next. I didn't even yes. realize you guys are next to each other. That'll be a... Fun little fisticuff moment every round. That's what the hat gave us. <laughs> the hat. Yes. Yeah. We had to pull our, our draft spots out of a hat. We will jump into a quick question first. A reminder, ultimatedraftkit.com. If you want access to the complete suite of draft day tools, help you dominate on draft day, get an advantage, see our tier-based rankings, which we use uh, and will be using today, all of our player projections, which is detailed stat projections for each and every player, in the uh, fantasy relevant world and we have our player profile videos and a whole lot more. You can check that out. See all of what's included at ultimate draftkit.com. The quick question is just about backup running back and late round strategy. Mike, do you use a late draft pick to grab the backup running back to your RB one as insurance? Or do you view that as a wasted pick? Uh, overall, I would view that as a wasted pick. I mean, you, you got to start at the, the top of the discussion, which number one, we are frequently wrong, like in the preseason, about who is the actual backup. There's some situations, you know, like Minnesota. Okay. If Dalvin Cook gets injured, more than likely it's Alexander I, Madison. I think that's a great, that's a perfect one to bring up because I don't think it's guaranteed with this new coaching staff that it's Alexander Madison. Like, exactly. There, there are still some question marks that maybe it is not Alexander Madison, but you feel a little bit more confident. But around the league, you just – Well, Tony Pollard and Zeke, I mean, that's a that's a super clean but one. I'm saying, like, for the most uh, for the most part, like Arizona at this point. Yeah, is it Eno? It, it could be Eno. He's, he's been getting some some praise out of out of uh, the beat reporters. But they brought in Daryl Williams, who is a, a known uh, commodity in the NFL. So, like, you, just, you, you aren't 100% sure who the backup – who will inherit the primary role is. And then on top of that, that you're, you're taking that person, that running back, and something has to happen. 
where there are plenty of running backs left in the draft at that point that no one really wants. But come week one, they could absolutely surprise you that they are involved right out the gate. They actually, maybe they're even the starter, like the the Houston Texans situation. That I don't think we're going to know until week one, and they take that first snap. Who's the starting running back for the Texans? Is it is it Marlon Mack off of the ACL? Is it Rex Burkhead who gave uh, gave the team some you know some effort last year or? <laughs> Well, because he had he had like one good. No, no, game. no, some effort. Yeah, and, or is it Damian Pierce, the new rookie? Like those. That's I'm taking a shot on someone like that. Not I'm not stashing someone on my bench for week one where I know an injury has to happen. I have to be like it, their starter is the one that gets hurt in week one, and then they are for sure actually the insurance running back. There's there's so many unknowns where I'd rather like find out immediately do I have a player of value we talk all the time about fantasy football and and when we're making these decisions it's a it's a game of probabilities right we're, we, we can't yes. be a hundred percent but we want to yeah. be you know 55 60 percent right right more than we're wrong that thank you fine. appreciate it um and and it's one of those things where if you just do the math of saying okay for this guy to be good an injury has to happen the injury has to be to that starting running back and it has to be week one yeah uh, like okay so Four percent of the time, you might be. It's that's just be a lower. It's just yeah, yeah, way. Low. It's just a bad bet to make. Whereas if you go and you grab like examples, I was thinking about Ronald Jones. Is yeah, he, he could be the starter week one. He could. You could you could draft him late, and all of a sudden he's the guy. Marlon Mack. Maybe he's fine from the Achilles because he's now the first example of like two years past, and he's he's the guy. Like could be take a shot at a player who has higher than four percent odds to be relevant week one if he's not you cut him you move on because if you if the star running back if you grab chris evans thinking that's the guy and you know in joe mixon's healthy week one are you are you gonna cut him are you you know you drafted him to hold him right. for that injury so now you can't even get rid of him unless you admit that what you did was dumb oh you nothing quite like holding him and being wrong about the backup too that would be just great right hold chris evans for six seven weeks and then be wrong i mean the player we brought up on the most recent show of Elijah Mitchell, that's a that's a situation where you look at and you say, well, he was injury prone, and the offense always functions with a running back, but who is it? Yes. You it, can't figure out, is it Davis Price or Sermon or, you know, someone off the street may walk in and be more effective. So That, I think, that was a situation I wanted to highlight real quick because like, I'm confident that Elijah Mitchell is the the primary guy. For the 49ers, for week one, for going going into this year, but th that doesn't mean I think that 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 Ty Davis Price is a complete wasted pick at the end because there's there's a chance that I'm incorrect on my projection and there's there's a chance that like, but oh, that's like the Houston situation, right. but it's right? like, like there's a chance that 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 uh, Ty is the, goal the new back. the new Jeff Wilson where he just frustrates you because he gets in he has like five opportunities a game. But two of those are goal line opportunities or things like that. Look, most insurance policies are going to get you. Yeah, you know yes. what I mean? Like yeah, there's when, a reason when those they companies ask you make at, money. When they ask you at the checkout line, you want to add the insurance on this? But you, you probably don't. Okay. And that's what that, you know, the insurance backs. Look, don't give the money to the insurance companies. I uh, you want the you want the scratch protection dude, for I, your disc? I laugh. Yeah, all right. No, I don't. <laughs> You're going way back. Best Buy? Time. I laugh at when I am offered the insurance for the super inexpensive mm -hmm. tech item like the ten dollar like laptop mouse that i buy but they have to ask you yeah but they want me to insure this ten dollar mouse sir it's only two dollars i'm just like <laughs> no no the insurance mm -mm. i feel bad for them having to ask and pitch me on that all right no news to cover today so we're going to jump right into the mock the fantasy footballers mock draft <laughs> thank you You're see welcome. i like it there okay <laughs> so the people demanded it something about the i don't know the scratchy fade out of the distortion on the guitar is combined with a gargly dragon roar mm -hmm. is that what the official uh moniker is gonna i be? don't Gar no i like that gargly dragon roar yeah, yeah. 
like there a, was w- far too many comments that revered it. And um, dragon in the morning. I don't know how much money he had to send out. <laughs> All right, we did. Uh, we did pull our names or pull our draft spots out of a hat. Jason ended up with the number two overall pick. Mike at seven. I'm at eight. Twelve team full PPR. One quarterback. Two running backs. Three wide receivers. So we're going to do a three wide receiver mock today. A tight end to flex and four bench. And let's kick it off. Jonathan Taylor off the board at the 101. Here we go. Jason is sitting go. there at 102 with a decision to make, a three wide receiver draft. What are you thinking about? Yeah, I wanted one of the top two spots. I like being near the turn, either the, the front or the back this year. And in a three wide receiver, full PPR, there are two players I desperately, desperately want. One is Christian McCaffrey because you got to swing for the fences. Nobody scores more points than him when he's on the field. And there's no reason to believe he's injury prone as far as because of the specific injuries he's had. Uh, he catches the ball a lot in a full PPR and is a true difference maker. And the other is Cooper Cup. If you've got to start three wide receivers, it's full PPR. The wide receivers are extremely important. And I would be willing, if, if Christian McCaffrey went one-on-one, I would be taking Cooper Cup here. But he didn't, so I am taking Christian McCaffrey with the second pick. Christian McCaffrey off the board. You decided oh, to live that life, which... Look, it's a terrifying life to live. It's worked out before, <laughs> just hasn't been a couple of years. Has it ever worked out for you? No, though? for me, I was I bought in heavy um, on the injury year, the first injury year. I did get out though last year, so did, so you know, I I was able to. Yeah, it's my turn. Right? <laughs> yes, we have we have passed the buck around here in our main league. Uh, Christian McCaffrey's over to Mike now. Uh, Derek Henry actually went 103 still. Austin Eckler at 104. Cooper Cup, first wide receiver off the board at 105. Dalvin Cook goes off the board at 106. He was my target at 108, oh, by the way. I was really okay. I was really hoping. I had already written down some stuff about why I was going to take him. And, well, why would you have taken him? Uh, just, he's going to catch a ton of passes. I mean, I just really like this offense and the fact that they're going to throw the ball more. I mean, you know, even last year, 60-plus targets. I was just going to... I'm kind of in on Dalvin Cook again this year. I think he's fundamentally, skill set wise, a top five actual running back at the NFL level. So I was excited, but now we don't get to take him. So, yep. Mike, you are on the clock here, and you can take anybody away from me you want. And I just was, remember, I, I'm going to do it on the way back. I had told Jason before the mock draft started. I've made a change in my in my upper tier rankings. Justin Jefferson is now my wide receiver one. So I was desperately hoping that he had dropped uh down to the 107 which he did and he did so i get my number one wide receiver in a three wide ppr i mean there's there are running backs who are known pass catchers here but i think jefferson is a fantastic like a very safe start to this draft and the number one overall wide receiver is in the range of outcomes for him yeah i mean there there's an emotional like i I want to draft Jamar Chase, but I'm not going to do it. I think in a full PPR situation here, I'm actually going to take a swing at DeAndre Swift in the first round. Um, the the target pace last year, what he's bringing to the table healthy this season, um, I, I want to see what it's like hitting that running back spot because it's going to get thin later. It doesn't matter that it's three wide receivers. I still need to start two running backs and the running back position is still very scarce later on in the draft. I think with the quarterback change in Pittsburgh, I, the way that I look at it, there's only three running backs in the league that are true, like, you know, could lead the team in reception type of running backs, which is Christian McCaffrey, Austin Eckler, and DeAndre Swift, a guy that, you know, you're, you're talking about 100 targets is not, not even a, a tall task. Not to breaking ask. a sweat. Yeah. So uh, after I took DeAndre Swift, Najee went, Jamar Chase, Stephon Diggs, uh, who I have uh, ranked very highly. I know Jason does as well. Joe Mixon finishing the first round. Yeah, I, I love Diggs. I think Diggs, if you look at his numbers last year, so much is being made of Gabriel Davis. I know, by yours truly, I, I do like yeah, Gabriel guilty. Davis. But, I mean, you've got a lot of targets missing here, and uh, Stephon Diggs should have had even more touchdowns for, for what he was, you know, where he was throwing the ball last year. Stephon Diggs is, to me, right there with the, the, the top of the top. Coming back into the second round, Devontae Adams, Alvin Kamara, Travis Kelsey, and Nick Chubb. So I am back on the clock here. You know, we have them back-to-back -back in our PPR rankings right now at wide receiver. 
C.D. Lamb and Debo Samuel. I was talking on the most recent episode how Samuel deserves more respect, and I have confidence in them putting the ball in his hands, which is key to a PPR format. I mean, he was number two wide receiver last year, and that's who I will take for the first time in our mock drafts. Interesting. Debo Samuel off the board in the middle of the second round, uh, last year's number two overall fantasy wide receiver. All right, so that puts me on the board here. The I'm looking at two names who are both wide receivers. Again, the, the running backs here. I think that ah, uh, for this for the build I'm going to go for here. I'm, I think I can wait on the running back position. And the two names I'm looking at: C.D. Lamb, the new hotness. I mean, well, not the newest hotness because he was kind of a you know that last year. But I think in the, his third year in the league the opportunity is really there with Amari Cooper gone for him to be the clear number one and how high can he actually go in th at the end of season rankings. But I'm, I've been really, I'm into Mike Evans a lot for the mm -hmm. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Like this Chris Godwin injury situation. I am like, I am out on Chris Godwin's ADP. I think that he is going to at least start on the pup. And even if he's back immediately after the, the new four week pup, is that right? Jay is it? Four, Four, yes. So he could technically come back in week five if he's put on the pup. But how ready is Chris Godwin? And there's going to be a ton of volume. You know Mike Evans is going to pull in 10-plus touchdowns. And I think that he, I think we have a chance that Mike Evans is back and locked and loaded as a top-five guy this week for one last hurrah with Mr. Plant Man Tom Brady. All right, Mike Evans is the pick. So you have Jefferson and Evans. Uh, Saquon Barkley went next uh then cd lamb off the board tyree kill off the board mark andrews i you know if he had been sitting there one pick later jason would you have considered mike mark andrews in a three wide receiver uh it, honestly it would have been really tough for me when you've got three wide it's a full ppr so mark andrews at the back of the second the value is certainly there but i find that if i you know if i'm doing that and then maybe there's another running back that i like for instance right now at the running back position um, Aaron Jones is sitting here. Leonard Fournette is sitting here. These are pass catching running backs. I was not expecting to go running back here. I wanted to go Christian McCaffrey and then double tap the wide receiver position, but I wouldn't. You're on the turn though. You got a quick turnaround here. It doesn't do. make a difference really. I do. So I'm, I'm certainly going to take, um, either Aaron Jones or Leonard Fournette. Aaron Jones to me has such massive upside, um, you You've know, been wanting to take him in a mock draft for a while. I have. Um, usually in the drafts that I've been doing that are live drafts, he is near the beginning of uh, the second round. So to grab him at the very end, I love. Leonard Fournette went just after me. Leonard Fournette and A.J. Brown by Team 1. So that puts me back on the clock. And the wide receivers that I'm looking at here, you've got PPR Machine and Keenan Allen, part of a great offense. Now, this is my wide receiver 1, so it's a little different. You know, I, I, I love Terry McLaurin. I just don't feel as confident in Terry McLaurin as my wide receiver one, that kind of steady baseline drumbeat that I want, um, as I do if if I had gone wide receiver, wide receiver, and have him as my two. So I'm actually looking between um, two guys here, uh, two two or three. Keenan Allen, I love Michael Pittman. Yeah, baby. And DJ Moore. Um, I'm at the turn, so I'm not worried – too much about the system's ADP. I'm worried about who I want. None of these guys are going to get back to me by the time it comes back around. So, By I'm the way, so far, for what it's worth, Jason running back, running back to start the draft, oh. Mike wide receiver, wide receiver to start the draft, and I went running back, wide receiver. So three different approaches to a three wide receiver, full PPR. It's going to be interesting to see what the depth of our teams ends up looking like. Mm, this is tough. <laughs> this is really, really tough. That was I, me delaying for you, no, giving I, you an opportunity. You delayed enough for me to take the guy that I would genuinely take. Um, you know, sometimes, look, peel back the curtain. Sometimes when we're on the clock here, we want to win the public opinion. opinion. We want to win the public opinion. And I know that Keenan Allen's going to look Jason better. Jason really likes oh, yeah. to win the public opinion. Yeah, the pander bear. Um, I, I really know that Keenan Allen would play better. But if this was my draft and my rankings, I'm taking Michael Pittman. I truly believe he you, is. You, sir, are a rapscallion. Yes, sir. And a scallywag. Now, I'm going to take it literally when you said you believe Keenan Allen will play better because I think that's right. 
I think he is fantastic, but he's coming up to age 30. I don't think he's got Dang the chance it. to have eight, nine, ten touchdowns because that's just not how he's full been. Full PPR, Keenan Allen is just a – Full PPR, Michael Pittman, I think is going to be right. I don't think their targets and reception totals are going to be so significantly different that the youth and uh, touchdown upside for Pittman isn't there. So, I, I mean, I get it. Sure. That's a tough call. Yeah, what, uh, 88 receptions last year for Michael Pittman, <laughs> so it's not like the gap was large. Uh, Michael Pittman off the board to Jason, first wide receiver for that roster. Uh, James Conner went next. Could catch more passes than people expect. Yep. Keenan Allen off the board. Josh Allen off the board. And then Zeke, Mike, you didn't, didn't have the opportunity to draft Ezekiel Elliott. I don't know if that would have tempted you because he catches a ton of passes, and I know your confidence in him is very high. Yeah, he, he would have been he would have been interesting here, but I have a plan. Uh, I had a plan coming into this, and it's it's unveiling that way, so I have not had to uh, rock the boat of the water. Is your plan three wide receivers? My plan was to go three wide receiver, and I have uh, I got my I got a plan for the the player that I want to come back to me. So I'm going to play the ADP game, and I'm going to take T Higgins here, who I am very bullish on. I think we all love we all love T Higgins. Uh, I don't know that I'm to the the crowd whispering that. Higgins could outscore Jamar Chase, but I think that at the end of the year, you could have you could easily have two top fifteen wide receivers, and maybe Jamar comes down a little bit, Higgins comes up, and they're like wide receiver ten and eleven or something. I think that could happen. Yeah, I mean, every year there are, are on average there's a team that has two wide receivers in the top twelve, and if there's one team I would pick, it would be the Bengals with those two superstars. Well, I have uh, a tough decision to make here. Mike went Jefferson, Evans, Higgins with the first three picks uh, in this draft. I have Swift and, and Debo, and it's such a tough decision. We're going to take a break. Now, it's not fair because Andy had so much time. He had uh, these last <laughs> few minutes to really <laughs> stop and speculate. So this, I can't wait to see where you landed with all that extra time. Uh, I landed in the same state of confusion, okay. uh, of Ooh. difficulty here, where um, there are some running backs that I think are interesting, Javante Williams, Cam Akers, mm -hmm. um, and neither of those players will make it back around to me. Uh, and when you get beyond that tier, I mean, I do like David Montgomery quite a bit. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about his involvement in the passing game. They don't have Allen Robinson as a part of that offense anymore. I know Nikhil Harry is just, you know, so tantalizing in the target share, but you know, David Montgomery is going to be a big part of that offense in the passing game. And then at wide receiver, it, it, it's a, it's a landscape of confusion here where, you know, you've got Deontay Johnson sitting there who yeah, is a PPR monster. He's so tough, but it's a little bit tough to project. They, the future for Deontay Johnson is not going to be on the Pittsburgh Steelers for one. They're not going to pay him. So this team has a bunch of wide receiver options. They have quarterback question marks. It makes me a little bit nervous as much as I love the talent of Deontay Johnson. Terry McLaurin, I'm not in on Terry McLaurin. I think I'm capping my ceiling by drafting Terry McLaurin. But in a full – and then DK Metcalf has a quarterback issue. So when you think about it, you can – DJ Moore is very interesting to me with Baker maybe raising at least the floor for DJ Moore, guaranteeing that he does what he's done. I'm going to take Jalen Waddle. That's who I thought you were. <laughs> that's who I thought you were going to go. I thought this whole speech. I'm thinking he's going to take Jalen Waddle. Oh, you're right. And it, you know, that was that was a roller coaster. Yeah, I mean it is a tough situation. And I knew, and and this is where it gets really unfortunate. Is you know the two running backs that go off the board, or sorry, the three after me. This is why I don't like drafting at eight. I think I've done this twice now. I hate where you guys are at. Like yeah, the seven eight spot. If you're in a competitive league where you know, things are not falling just really lucky into your lap. I have not enjoyed the middle of the rounds this year. No, it's 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 somewhat brutal. And so you end up with Javante going off the board and David Montgomery and Cam Akers. And, and David Montgomery and Cam Akers went right before my pick here, and it's brutal. Now a couple quarterbacks went off the board. Mahomes and Herbert are off. I would have considered a Darren Waller in the fourth round here. He's gone. Kyle Pitts is gone. I'm not going to the George Kittle well here in the fourth round, already having Debo Samuel on this team. That's enough uh, accidental trust placed in Trey Lance. 
So I'm staring down a decision at running back, uh, you know, taking a shot on a Josh Jacobs, a Brees Hall, um, Elijah Mitchell, who, you know, again, he, he may not be that involved in the passing game. And then on the wide receiver side, same problem. So I'm going to go DJ Moore. Um, okay. I, I feel very fortunate that I got to come back with DJ Moore after thinking about him at 308. I get him at 405. Uh, DeAndre Swift, Debo Samuel, Jalen Waddell, DJ Moore. Mike, you have your three wide receivers so far, Jefferson, Evans, and Higgins. What is your plan cool. now? Are you can't considering? Stop, well, can't stop, won't stop, fellas. We're oh, gonna, he's going to another wide receiver. We're going to fill that flex spot with a wide receiver here. I thought I knew who you were going to take. Uh, and that now that, you, now that you have not, you've made my, my decision a little bit more difficult. Who did you think I was going to draw? I thought you were going to take Mike Williams. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I've, is that because I've taken him in every single mock draft we've been in? I, because we all love him so much more than his his ADP, and you're at this. I don't think Mike Williams will make it back. To he you. probably won't, but in a standard or a half, I like him a little bit more than in a full PPR. Where look, Debo, Jalen Waddle, and DJ Moore, those could all be 100 reception wide receivers. Sure. Um. So I didn't. I didn't really give him. More thought than DJ Moore there. So the, the the two guys that I am looking between it's it's Mike Williams and Cortland Sutton. I have them ranked back to back. Jason's face uh, <laughs> tells me that he wants one of those. No, players. no, no, no. I so my my face is just Brees Hall. I know you guys aren't as oh, yeah. happy uh, on uh, oh, as I, high I on like Brees him. Hall as I am, but I I'm just really ho there's there's five picks before me, and I just really want Brees Hall to go. Because I don't want to sit, sit, stare, stare down his name and pass him where I'm at. I don't think I have the strength. And so with I got Jefferson, Evans, Higgins. Feel very confident <clears throat> in those three. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the rankings and give the edge to Mike Williams because it's because like as much as my confidence is that Cortland Sutton's the guy or it should be the the one A at least for oh yes the one A for the Denver Broncos. <clears throat> there's a chance I'm wrong. It could be Jerry Judy. And I think that Mike Williams, while he will be volatile in my flex, that's just that's the place for him to be. Just juicing my scores on a, <laughs> just juicing them up every Juice once, the scores every few weeks or so. Now let's, um, yeah, baby. I want to take a minute now before we get to Jason. This is actually about Mike. Oh, okay. Because Mike just now passed on his champion. Yes. Mm to be his first running back that he could have taken in the fourth round, instead going for a fourth wide receiver, Mike Williams. Yes. He passed on Antonio Gibson. Oh, so sad. Any final words this offseason for Antonio Gibson? Uh, Ron Rivera, I don't like the things that you're saying. And I, and I think you're wrong. I think you are wrong to uh, put Mr. Robinson into the fold. I think it should be Antonio Gibson featured and then J.D. McKissick uh, just spelling every once in a while. I feel like what that was is you're you're on the beach shore and you just pushed the boat out. You haven't lit that uh you know that arrow yet, but you. So here here's the thing. <laughs> it's floating. Yeah. Like I'm not out on Antonio Gibson, but hmm. No, I'm not. But here's the for my rankings in a three wide receiver full PPR. I have now drafted four top fifteen wide receivers, and Antonio Gibson is like my RB twenty. Right. So. I'm sticking with that plan of now I can start loading up at the at the running back position and they on paper they will not be nearly as strong but that four pack I believe that four pack is amazing is going to carry me on well a it's going to have to because you're going to be drafting running backs that you don't like as much yep but and I think that it might we'll, we'll figure it out it might I, work out uh, I met, was oh sorry go on no I was just I was just going to say draft. I was I mean, thrilled that Brees Hall went right before me. Um, I, I'm a big fan of Brees Hall. He went with Gibson. Um, so the running back position is not one I want to focus on here since I have McCaffrey, I've got Aaron Jones. And then after Mike picked Metcalf and McLaurin, two wide receivers, I would have been fine with as my wide receiver two. also came off the board. So now I'm staring down, um, uh, two, two wide receivers. I really, really like, uh, Cortland Sutton and Marquise Hollywood Brown, those two sure. wide receivers, if they're not your one, they, they aren't necessarily projecting to be, you know, 100 reception PPR machines, but I think they both have great quarterbacks. They could both be the one for their team. I mm. 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 Uh, and I think I've got a good chance to get both of these guys. 
So I'm going to play the system ADP game to try to get both, and I will take Cortland Sutton first. I like it. All right, Cortland Sutton, J.K. Dobbins, George Kittle. You, you no thought to one. Kittle. You said you loved Kittle. No thought to Kittle there. I really like Kittle's upside, but again, when it's a three wide receiver, and it, it that just pushes tight ends down in their importance to me because you know if it's either a double flex or a three wide receiver, I want to fill out my running backs and wide receivers more. Uh, if I was to look at running back here, I think when you're getting in the fifth round, Travis Etienne, Elijah Mitchell, those are two great options. In a full PPR, I'd go Travis Etienne as Elijah Mitchell isn't the uh, pass catching specialist, but I'm going to stick with my plan. I'll have Michael Pittman, Cortland Sutton, and Marquise Hollywood Brown at wide receiver for my three wide receiver to go with the pass catching running backs, Christian McCaffrey and Aaron Jones. Allen Robinson, Lamar Jackson, Travis Etienne, and Elijah Mitchell. So those are two names that I thought, at least the way I was looking at it, and it seemed like the way Jason was talking about it, were probably the next tier of running back, and they both went. Um, both were going to be in consideration for me at 508 and Mike's on the clock at 507 with no running backs. I don't know what your plan was. I don't know if it was to continue down this road, but, uh, you know, Josh Jacobs is sitting there. Miles Sanders, who you like, um, where, where are you looking for this fifth selection? So it's actually, and would you have taken Mitchell and ETN? Uh, or ETN? I would have considered ETN more than Mitchell because of the PPR. Right. Uh, I'm in, the decision, I get it. it. Right now, everyone's screaming, take a running back. And that's that's where I lean to, to go. But it is very difficult with Brandon Cooks sitting right there. Yes, he would absolutely be on my bench for week one. Uh, but I have Brandon Cooks ranked, I mean, extremely high. I have him, have him at wide receiver 13 right now. So being just so stocked and loaded is interesting. Uh, and meanwhile, so at the running back position, I have some players I want as my running back two, and I think I have to play the ADP. And this is not like this is a tough pick here because so many things have to go right. But vacated targets, I believe in our study that the running back gets a, a decent bump. The man had a, a gallbladder issue, and I'm going to. For this moment in time, I'm going to believe that that was a huge reason for him not being a a big part of the, the game plan for the Kansas City Chiefs. So I will take Clyde Edwards-Alaire, who even if Ronald Jones comes in and makes us a timeshare, Ronald Jones is not the pass-catching running back. So hopefully Clyde gets those gets those targets up. How confident are you in no, all of those I've, words? Not. <laughs> all right, that's great. I want Josh Jacobs, so I'm going to take him next. Uh, you took Clyde, I took Josh Jacobs, Godwin, Amari Cooper, Jerry Judy, and Michael Thomas off the board to finish the round, so a run of wide receivers. And then coming back in the second round, um, Damian Harris, who has not been talked about a lot this offseason and is probably talked about even less than a PPR, but will yeah. provide volume, uh, some volume. Ken Walker and A.J. Dillon, and then Joe Burrow off the board. So I am back on the clock with... Um, Gosh, I I thought about Brandon Cooks with my last pick, yeah. and he is still You're, on the board. Brandon Cooks is always a screaming value. Nobody wants to take him, and everyone's happy when I they do. I did. I mean, Brandon Cooks is ranked 16 for us right now, or 15 in a PPR format, so I am delighted to yeah, go Jacobs and Brandon Cooks. Uh, so Cooks off the board, Mike. You are back on the clock. Jefferson, Evans, Higgins, Mike Williams, and, and Clyde Edwards-Alaire. And a long wait for you after this pick. So um, uh, I'm actually, I'm there. There is a part of me that is grateful because if Brandon Cooks had made it back to me, I, I don't know how I would have turned down that particular value. Uh, but the running back too, I was hoping dropped to me. He he did drop to me, and uh, I will be taking Kareem Hunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't mind that as my running back to in a PPR. I am perfectly fine with that. Just to be clear, Clyde is your running back too. Okay, maybe. No. Hey, look. <laughs> look. Well, Just to be clear, they're both your running back, too. <laughs> I won't necessarily argue that could be it by week two. <laughs> A mental transition it, will happen. It won't matter because Jefferson, Evans, and Higgins will each have two touchdowns on that week, and then Mike Williams will have two more in your flex. Yeah, that's the, that's the point of this build. Uh, Hawkinson, Thielen, Hopkins, and then Jalen Hurts off the board. Mm, so That one... 
hurts. Hey, yeah. uh, Jason, you're living your quick turn life here. Six round pick. Um, McCaffrey, Aaron Jones, Michael Pittman, Cortland Sutton, Hollywood Brown. What's the thought here? You got two picks out of the next four. Yeah, so I, I will look and see. Okay, so at wide receiver, I really like two guys there. Darnell Mooney projects to get a ton of targets in a PPR, and I like Juju Smith-Schuster this year. I think that he's uh, going to be the wide receiver one personally for the Kansas City Chiefs. So with both of those guys on the board and, you know, I'm, I'm two picks away, I, I think I'm going to play the, the gamble game there and go away from – um, the wide receiver position with this first pick. I wanted Jalen Hurts. That was my target. If he fell to the very back of uh, the sixth round, I will take him 100% of the time. I've got another quarterback that's right there with him, though, and he stacks with Hollywood Brown. So I'm going Ooh. to draft Kyler here to complete that little stack. And thankfully, the next two Now, is picks that little stack because they're short? Yes, that's right. Oh. No, it was a that's not very nice. No, I was making fun of their height. Um, because it, which they, he can do because he's five nine. No, I am not. How dare you call me <laughs> five nine and a half? Aww. Five eleven. <laughs> um, uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, in both directions, uh, height and width. So, oh, um, <laughs> I wasn't sure. <laughs> okay. Oh. All right. So now here I am, which, and no, like not forcing the Arizona stack, but it just dropping to you is. Yeah, that's, that's fun. A, I like that a lot. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't trying to, but it, it fell into my lap, so that's good. There's two players here that I really like. Um, uh, at the turn here, Amon Ross St. Brown, Devonta Smith, went. So I like Juju Smith-Schuster. I like Darnell Mooney. And at running back, um, uh, Chase Edmonds is there, who I think in a PPR for a good offense is a good pick. I'm going to take the player at this point in the seventh round that I think that has the highest upside which I don't know who you guys think that would be, but to me, it's Juju Smith-Schuster, a guy who is, we've already seen him put up 1,600 yards and, and be great, has had a lull in his career, but is now back with Patrick Mahomes. Opportunities there, and I, I think he's still very, very good. Um, Back with Patrick Mahomes? Is, for the first time, you mean? Is back with a good quarterback named Patrick <laughs> Mahomes. Okay. okay. Uh, Burks. Miles Sanders off the board, Mike. If you had hoped to grab another wide uh, running back, uh, Dalton Schultz, someone I was I was keeping my eyes on, hoping maybe I think he'll be a valuable PPR tight end this season. So that was going to be interesting in a full. Uh, Drake London off the board, Mike. You are on the clock. Dalton Schultz was going to be in contention for my pick here. Uh, the three of us, no, none of us have a tight end, but I mean, the high value guys are gone. Schultz was the last remaining one that I'm okay taking here in the middle rounds and not just doing a full tight end punt and waiting till, uh, till the end, but he is gone. Jason was casually mentioning the player that I was hoping dropped to me, and it was Chase Edmonds, so now I I feel pretty good here with uh, being able to start with those four powerhouse uh, wide receivers and getting three guys that are very strong pass catchers for the PPR format, so I've I like the, the, the plan. The plan uh, came together here in the seventh round with a nice little bow. I'm not sure where I'm going to go after this, but I like where I've started. Yeah, uh, Clyde edwards alaire Kareem Hunt, and Chase Edmonds. You should be able to play two of them every week and and have enough points that and have if a good floor. If yeah. your stardom at wide receiver comes through in a full PPR three wide receiver flex league, uh, the the build has not worked uh, as poorly as I had hoped for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <You're welcome. laughs> I think. I have a tough decision to make here because I am I am not enjoying drafting from the eighth spot. Um, there are a handful of players that I think are very interesting, and I, I hate – this is the, the hard part of doing the mock draft live on the show – is there's one name that I really – love and if i talk about him i'm going to be illuminating that for you guys you you get two picks before i go though i know but he will be neither of them well who is he then? oh it's robert woods okay oh, yeah. okay and yeah. i think robert yeah. woods in a full ppr robert. is exceptionally interesting he is he is far down the adp uh you know you're playing the system adp game he is significantly lower um so i'm think here's my three picks for two spots okay okay and you guys help talk me through this Cordero Patterson, who is essentially sure. a wide receiver as a running back. Not to mention, like if you read what's going on around Atlanta, they're giving him all these off-season programs off. 
he's not necessarily going to be the bell cow, but he's going to be a big part of the offense, bringing him back. Sure. And they're trying to keep him fresh. So I am definitely interested in Cordero in the first half of the season again. And then looking at the quarterback position, there are, I'm really into Russ and Dak. I think both are great options. I know I could get one of those two guys with my next pick. Should be able to, yes. Um, and so, so really the way that I'm looking at it is it's Cordero. It's probably going to be Cordero, I think, because I'm not going to take Robert Woods quite yet. I'm glad I, we could help. I would be waiting. Yeah, wh what are you guys thinking about my no, team? No, 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 we did it. We, we helped you out. I, I think you're going to go so Cordero difficult. Patterson, if I'm being honest. <laughs> That's just the way that I, you know. If, if Patterson is so difficult because like he, you know, Probability and trend wise, what he accomplished last year is is a complete outlier in the history of football and fantasy football. To be his age, to have just changed oh, like it, the real official position change and have it work out with such success was huge. Can that? He's a year older. He's got that wear and tear now. Can that happen a second time in a row? And he doesn't have Matt Ryan. He has Marcus Mariota, who's a bit more mobile. Well, it doesn't have to happen to check again. It, down? it doesn't have to, though. Okay. It's the late seventh round. And so when you get beyond right. – the bigger thing for me is the tier breakdown where you get beyond Cordero and you're in backup country. You're in Tony Pollard, Devin Singletary, James Cook. Um, now Rashad Penny's sitting there. Yeah, that's interesting. So that, that would be – you know, Penny is a consideration. But, again, Mel Melvin Gordon, Michael Carter, Ramondre, Isaiah Spiller, these are all backups. Yeah. I, he's I, the last starter. I love Rashad Penny in general, but he's not a pass catcher. And there's really not going to be a pass catching running back in the Seattle offense, whereas Cordero, I don't like the age at all. And, and I don't – I think I drafted Cordero for the first time ever – yesterday in one of in one of my leagues but for the most part I just don't have any shares because of his age um but in a in a full PPR league it's hard for me to to look at Rashad Penny the same uh, as I do in other leagues well I will go with Cordero Patterson just uh barely getting the advantage uh Darnell Mooney goes next Russ off the board um and then Elijah Moore and Rashad Bateman who were interesting at wide receiver, but I felt very fortunate to get a fourth wide receiver in Brandon Cooks in the sixth yes. round. So I went back to running back with Patterson. Hunter, which, by the way, Patterson is only a running back in, in sleeper. In uh, Renfro, Pollard, Gabe Davis, uh, Dawson Knox, and then I went with Dak Prescott, the last of the two, those two quarterbacks that I was eyeballing. Russell Wilson getting Dak in the eighth round uh, versus paying Kyler Price in the sixth round. Because I looked at him, too. I thought about him in the sixth round, and but I feel better now. Your strategy paid off well. You looked at the four teams that were past you. Three of them had a quarterback. You had two quarterbacks you like. It, it's those little tiny things that some we all know to do it. Sometimes we just forget. Sometimes mm -hmm. we don't sure. look, uh, especially when you're at the seventh or the eighth spot, you feel like, well, there's so many teams that it's not worth looking. Always look, and you did, and, and you played that right. You had two quarterbacks you like. One fell back to you. Mike, on the clock, he has gone... Four wideouts and then three running backs. Jefferson, Evans, Higgins, Williams, and then Edwards. Tight ends the rest of the way. Edwards, Alaire. No, all quarterbacks. Uh, Clyde Edwards, Alaire, Kareem Hunt, and Chase Edmonds. I, I'm going to mention it now because I just, you know, when are you taking Trey Lance? Like, when is, the, <laughs> when, when is that going to happen? Uh, I believe ye, like, that, is, that is a drafting faux pas to bring up the name of the player that I will be drafting eventually. Uh, and I don't know. I mean, we'll – Sooner than later, of course. <laughs> like, it's going to happen. It's going to have to be now or next. Uh, I, I think so, yeah. He's a, if you don't take him now, you might not get him. The I thought Gabriel Davis would drop to me here. Yeah. And we're we're in the eighth. This is, that would have been a great swing. This is upside time. and I So I'm, I'm, that one stings there from Team 10. In best ball, Gabriel Davis is – like, I love Gabriel Davis. Yeah. He is out – he's in the fourth – I mean, he is just being drafted so high. So it, when, when, when August rolls around and you're in your home leagues, I think Dave, Gabe Davis is going to be a, an absolute steal in these you know seventh, eighth rounds. And his teammate Dawson Knox right after him. Uh, Mike, where are you going with this pick, eighth round? So at the running back position, Rashad Penny is still there. And the last, as, as, as we see it and I see it, he is the last starting running back on the board. I mean – it's hard for your wow. team not to take him, considering that it is. You know, Clyde Hunt and Edmonds 
all three of those players may get no very minimal first and second down work. So it's interesting because yes. Penny is the inverse of that. Absolutely. But also could be stability and upside. In in the range of outcomes. But uh, like this team here, where for week one, I'm set. Like I'm I would be starting Clyde and Kareem Hunt here at or maybe Chase. Somehow he he with, uh, with everything that happens, he sneaks in, he's my starter. I mean, this team is also will be, you know, grinding away at the waiver wire specifically for the running back position, which is nice that I don't have to worry really worry about the wide receivers. But uh, So Penny would be the one I would take here, but I'm looking for upside just overall, and is Penny's truly there, even though he's a value in the eighth round? But I'm going to start – I'm going to look at uh, upside at the wide receiver position, and I'm going to take one of the rookies. I'm going to take Chris Olave uh, from the New Orleans Saints – he, like, we did, we still don't know on Michael Thomas. We, we've we got, uh, you know, a recent report from one of the, the beat reporters out of New Orleans, and that they're hearing good things about Thomas. But it's Thomas and Jarvis Landry, and... In possession receiverville. Yeah, so I'm going with Chris Olave. Yeah, he does have upside. And those rookies, eighth round, I mean, um, another one went off the board right after you. Garrett Wilson... Devin Singletary, Goddard, and Tyler Lockett, who I still think is undervalued because he's Tyler Lockett. He's a very good he's wide so receiver. Good. Yeah, he is. He is very good. Um, here at the end of the eighth, I know I I talked about the PPR versus non PPR, but you guys have brought it up. Rashad Penny is really the end of a tier sure. starting running back. I only have two, so since he was, it was between him and Singletary, who I also think is a value this late in drafts. Could be. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted one of those two. Rashad Penny was the last one left. Unfortunately, Andy Robert Woods went, and it wasn't me. Uh, Tom Brady, Ooh, Robert team Woods, one. team one, just disappointing. Said, Sticking it to Andy, so I am. Back. You would have taken him here. I I know that. I would not have because there is a player now that I I already have four wide receivers. So when I look at wide receivers, I'm going for upside. Robert Woods, you hope you're hoping becomes that kind of possession guy that go to target, but he's not. He's not someone that has some chance to uh, really break fantasy or do anything special. And I've talked a lot about this guy with Kyle in the studio, uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna take my shot. At Patrick Mahomes is one. I did that with Juju, and I'm going to take my shot at the number one for Aaron Rodgers. Oh, and which one is that? And I'm taking the shot on Christian Watson. Okay. Um, Christian Watson, uh, not a lot of production as a four-year wide receiver. Those are red flags. Um, however, he was at a program that ran the ball. They won championships. He did everything they asked him to do. He is a true freak of nature. He's sub 4'4", four, four, over 200 pounds, 6'4". And, you know, I think that he is their most talented athletic receiver coming in. And he dominated at the Senior Bowl, which is a good sign. We've seen that uh, good things for Cooper Cup and Debo Samuel. So I'm I'm trying to... Uh, catch lightning in a bottle there with Christian Watson. I thought he was going to say he went with the number one for Patrick Mahomes, the Juju, and now I'm going to go with the number one for Patrick Mahomes, Marquez Valdez-Scantling. <laughs> uh, no, uh, you got uh, James Cook off the board next. I'm a little bummed out here. Zach Ertz was my tight end target in a PPR format. I'm not sure you would have made it past me. I know, I know. And then Aaron Rodgers and Matthew Stafford off the board, setting the table for Trey Lance. Um, Mike, the, you're the, on the clock. Uh, yeah, I'm taking Trey Lance. <laughs> <laughs> I I know that uh, the rest of y'all have a quarterback here going into the turn. <laughs> Don't care, but but teams get crazy sometimes. Uh, some people are vengeful. And now I don't know if the computer listens to the show, but we did tell everybody yes. to take Trey Lance anyways. Yeah, so well, you I'm, have two picks, and you were the one that said that. Yeah, so, so I am not dancing with that devil. I wanted Trey Lance. I got him. I'm happy. I've got a few tough decisions here. Um, I, I don't know if I will get both of them. I have two wide receiver targets, and then I would plan to kind of punt my tight end to the very end of this draft. Um, both of those targets I can talk about because neither of you guys pick, but they're Russell Gage and Alan Lazard as upside wide receiver targets here oh, in this man. round. I mean, imagine getting Aaron Rodgers' number one target this late in the draft. Right. <laughs> um, I think maybe for the comedic effect, I'll start with Lazard there. Okay. And then uh, see if I get Russell Gage on the way back. I don't think I will. Ooh. Melvin Gordon was a little tempting there uh, as well because he has some upside, and it's interesting. Like, if, if Javante did get hurt, like, he's a committee back, Gordon. He's sure. not a full pure, pure backup. And then, it, you know, when you get a committee back 
in a system where we like Russell Wilson and what they're going to do on offense, and then Javante gets banged up, or we're wrong about the split, there was some upside there. But um, I I didn't win the gamble. Russell Gage ended up going in the top of the tenth. James Robinson, Christian Kirk, Ramondre Stevenson. Uh, it's back to me uh, at the running back position. It is. It's kind of gross. Um, and then at wide receiver, there are some interesting names, somebody like Gallup that you could wait on. MVS, you know, I let's do it. Let's take MVS. You're taking both my guys? I'm going to take the, Let's go. I'm going to take both players because yeah. they are the actual different choices as Jason. Jason went with Watson and with Juju. I'm going to go Lazard and MVS because at this point in the draft, I'm going to I'm going to flip that coin. Yes. I'm going to see what happens. I like it. I think it's the strategy that you should take. I would be just as happy to take Lazard and MVS. We don't have a crystal ball as to who's going to come out of these uh, you know, nebulous wide receiver cores, but we know it's a great quarterback. We know there's going to be value there. So call your shot, grab one of them, whoever you like the best or whoever is left, and I think you should leave your draft with one of one of those, you know, four guys, and then it'll be Sky Moore. <laughs> right, right. Uh, Mike, you're on the it, clock. Trey Lance is be. on your team. Uh, you lucky, lucky man. Yep. What are you doing now? I mean, we're we're still searching for upside, so I'm going to take a sophomore wide receiver who, in his rookie year, had a game of ten for one eighty nine against the Dallas Cowboys. They have cleaned house. We've recently talked about that. But the New York Giants, like, whatever happened last year, they will be better this year. They could pass a ton more with Dable as the head coach here. So I'm going to take Kadarius Tony. I'm going to take youth. I, I I get all the arguments. Galladay could return to form and be the guy and, and earn that contract. But Tony has that Tyreek Hill quick twitch ability, and he could emerge as the number one for this team. All right, Jason, you're back on the clock here in the 10th round. Um, the first pick is easy for me. There was a player that I was targeting um, almost from the last pick. I did not go with Darnell Mooney uh, when I was close to taking him earlier, and I don't want two bears, but I want those two shots at massive volume. So I am going to this take – This is a Cole Komet pick. This is a Cole Komet pick. I think I Cole Komet – is going to be a very high volume tight end. He doesn't project to have a ton of touchdowns, but in a PPR league, mm -hmm. you know, he's to me, it's like Cole Komet. How different is he than Zach Ertz? Obviously, a better quarterback situation, but he's kind of no, gonna, that's a good comp. Just going to be a volume guy, and you can get him really late, back of the and tenth round. He's actually round. young and getting better. Yeah, I mean, he will not score. <laughs> that is clear, but he might catch the ball in the middle of the field. So, uh, did you guys see the comments from Friar Muth on his goals? By the way, who went right before Komet? I did not. He said uh, his goal is 800, 900 yards this okay. year, and he called his own average yards per catch atrocious at 8.3. So, which hmm, Big Ben? Yeah. So uh, it could be it could be a little okay. bit more interesting for Frymuth, and if they do indeed do what I said earlier about Deontay, kind of build this offense a little bit, spread the targets out a little bit more because your dependency on Deontay has to go away after this year. If they don't resign him, which it doesn't seem like they will, then Frymuth could yeah. have more upside it than we think. Yeah, so I've got two picks left, two positional players. Um, there are a couple of wide receivers. Two wide receivers, I think, could both make it back to me at the very end of this draft. That would be the 12-11. So I'm going to bypass wide receiver here. I only have three running backs. Granted, they're Christian McCaffrey and Aaron Jones at the top, so I'm I'm fine with both that. Both super injury-prone running backs. That <laughs> is potentially true. Uh, our quick question of the day was, do you take a, a complete you know, insurance back? I don't. This guy is... Maybe seen that way, but I think that's a mistake. I'm actually going to take Isaiah Spiller, rookie running back for the Chargers. Great okay. offense. If you look at how they've used Austin Eckler over the last couple of years, they he, there's always someone else. There's there's other people. The other people just suck. Well, maybe Isaiah Spiller doesn't. He's the big body guy, so maybe he's used around the goal line. I think there's a chance that he gets fantasy points with Austin Eckler actually active. And then, obviously, there is the upside uh, in the offense should something happen there. Uh, Mike, you're back on the clock. Now, you took Trey Lance in the ninth. Would you have considered Kirk Cousins in the 11th as a, uh, you know, almost the inverse of what we talked about, where you end up with Trey Lance, but you don't know what that story is going to be? I know we like Kirk Cousins. Yeah, I, I would have been okay with it. You know, nice to kind of get the complete the stack with Justin Jefferson. So I would have been okay with it, but I just – well, it could happen if if the passing volume goes up. Kirk Cousins can be, you know, like we've talked about on the show, a top six or whatever, top eight guy. Trey Lance, 
the top five is to me something that could happen. I mean, Trey Lance, I think, can shock the world in both directions. He could be an absolute bust, but he could be phenomenal for fantasy football. Um, so here at the end, I, I don't. You have, do have to have a tight end. Yeah, I do have. Yeah, looking at the tight end position, so I want to take a look at the grid. We have Andy. You need a tight end. Yep. No one else needs one. Yep. Here and, but you're one pick ahead of Andy. I am. Well, the, the yep. hard part is, like, for me, the the pick is probably Irv Smith at the tight end position. But but do, you know, Andy won't take him. I know you won't take him. And do I really want to be rolling out Justin Jefferson and Irv Smith right. every single week? Right. And, and I I don't know if I really want to do that or not. Uh, but for the sake of time, I will be doing that. <laughs> all well, right like, like the in, an interesting name especially in ppr to me is evan engram who signed the 10 million dollar one d one year deal with the jacksonville jaguars which evan engram but you mean it's he is a very easy player to make jokes and say what a waste of career but in terms of rebuilding your image he is in a perfect spot with a possibly emerging elite quarterback, possible, with Trevor Lawrence, and Doug Peterson, whose system has always, always heavily featured a pass-catching PPR tight end. Yeah, no, I I, I love so Evan he was Ingram as a, as a deep sleeper this this year. I think that there's uh, a, certainly a world where that could come true. I just did, I did not realize you 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 said the contract. I didn't realize he got a fully guaranteed nine million dollar contract yes. instead of up to ten. That's that's a good chunk of money to pay the man. And, the, uh, and, and you right can't away. consider money on that team. <laughs> that is Did true. You that money, Christian Kirk. Okay, paid? That, that's very fair. Um, you got to get paid the the what is that the um? It's the Jacksonville an tax. extra stipend. Yeah, well, Jack, you, the you, took, you took my wide receiver. You jerk. Did I? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I, so Parker. I went. I went with Devontae Parker in the eleventh round, my final position or non tight end. Um, he's going to be the primary target, I think, for Mac Jones and an up and coming offense. Could be. Uh, and then coming back around to the last round, I'm going to blow your minds on my tight end pick as much as one can in the final round of a draft. <laughs> but I think I will go with a player who has a new home. Oh, yeah. Was yeah. the number six tight end the past uh, two times in a row no, before never. changing uh, homes and is now being going to be featured in a PPR extravaganza because they don't have any other options. I'm going to take Austin Hooper in Tennessee. He had 75 receptions, uh, two, 70 plus receptions, two years in a row with Matt Ryan goes to Cleveland. Isn't used that way. They don't have options in Tennessee. He has a great rapport with Ryan Tannehill, Robert Woods. I think Austin Hooper ends up being the second leading receiver in terms of, uh, total receptions. So in a full PPR format with the last pick of my draft, and every other tight end off the board, I think Austin Hooper will be a stabilizing four or five catches a week. Yeah, that uh, I, it's interesting, and he could he could get back there. It was not a good fit for him in Cleveland in that scheme. Yeah, I mean, with with Burks not reportedly being what they had hoped. Yeah, it, and it, it could in be a, a, in lot, a Cooper, lot of I think Cooper will have a more interesting season than people believe. Not I, not ex, not like touchdown totals, but. No, th this is a in a PPR league for the last round. I I don't mind that at all. I've had a hard time grabbing Hooper in best ball because I feel like for the tight ends yep. to break the lineup, you need those touchdowns. I don't project that, but uh, I I do think Hooper is very involved. They, he doesn't. They don't have a choice. No, no, no. He and and all the reports are that he his reports are the opposite of Trey Lumbers. Right. So um, there you go. Final picks for Mike and Jason. So uh, I'm looking, you know, at the running back position. I could go with. With Mac, I could take J.D. McKissick, just who, yeah, smooches. Go ahead. Yeah, I thought about him, too. Oh, do well, now he won't do it. Cause he, yeah, there was, ha, you scared nobody. Did you actually move the volume up ever? No, I didn't. Okay. Just feels that way. Uh, Like, McKissick feels like a safer PPR potential, but if, it's a, if it truly is a three running back timeshare and Carson Wentz at the helm, not as interesting for me. So I'm looking at the wide receiver. Let's go full upside here. Like DJ Chark, interesting-ish for the Lions who are going to have to throw a ton. I don't believe that Jameson Williams will be ready to go. And Chark will go. He'll be the perimeter uh, wide receiver or one of them. 
but they're we're getting we're starting to get some some decent buzz here. So I'm just gonna I'm going all upside youth here. Love it. Mm. Love I'm the gonna pick. take Jalen Tolbert, who we you know such a better pick than going Chark right now. They're saying Tolbert's gonna be a starter, which. Two, I, two, three wide receiver stats. What does it mean? Yeah, what does it mean? And, and I didn't really need them to tell me because Gallup is not going to be ready. And you have CeeDee Lamb. Who else? I mean, James Washington. Like, Tolbert's going to play right away. And we'll see. Well, let's just let's bet on some youth and some upside here. Final pick, Jason. Uh, yeah, I was uh, targeting earlier Devontae Parker, who went, Jahan Dotson, who went. Then I was like, okay, I will target uh, Kenny Galladay and Jalen Tolbert, and they, they, they went, and they went. So here I am at the bottom of the barrel. I'm going to take a guy who I think in a PPR league on a great offense has an opportunity to be Cole Beasley. And wait, that it- wait, don't take him. Okay. I want, I want to see if I can sell you on two other players just to end the draft. All right. David Bell. Did you consider I love, David Bell? Love David Bell. Uh, I think he's talented. I think that he could have okay. a big quarterback upgrade. He is certainly uh, in consideration. I and then Mark Ingram was the other name I wanted to bring up simply can, because of PPR plus the Camara situation. Yeah, I don't. I don't want the old men at the end of my okay. draft. Right. I, I would like youth. Um, so I'll take old man Jamison Crowder. Yeah, I was about to. I was about to say. I was like, I don't want the old man. I was like, is he pivoting to Isaiah McKenzie? Then I, I didn't know where so, he was going to go. Well, I wanted to bring up Isaiah McKenzie because I love Isaiah McKenzie. I was touting Buffalo him last Bills. year. Yes, Buffalo Bills wide receiver. I was touting him last year when Cole Beasley was gone, which uh, is where Jamison Crowder is for people yeah. that don't know. Yes, and and people brought up the contract situation that oh, you know, they're they're paying McKenzie more. McKenzie is unfortunately a special teams player. And I, I believe that that's how the Bills are using him. I think that it will be Jamison Crowder in the Cole Beasley role for a PPR. Right now they've been take. splitting. Yeah, I mean, I that's just how I'm projecting it uh, this season. All right, Jason, run back your team for us. Uh, my team, I have Kyler Murray at the top, uh, Christian McCaffrey, Aaron Jones at running back. My re- wide receivers are Michael Pittman, Cortland Sutton, Marquise Hollywood-Brown with Juju in the flex. Cole Komet, and a bench of Rashad Penny, Christian Watson, Isaiah Spiller, and Jameson Crowder. Mike? Got Trey Lance, of course, as my quarterback. Clyde Edwards, Alaire, Kareem Hunt are my RB1 and 2. But Justin Jefferson, Mike Evans, T. Higgins, and Mike Williams. <laughs> There's a butt in your... Well, I mean, if when you're focused on wide yeah, receiver... Yeah, no, that's okay. Uh, big, we got Big Irv Smith, hopefully holding down my tight end position, and then the bench, Chase Edmonds, Chris Olave, and Jalen Tolbert, the rookies, and Kadarius Toney. Yeah, I like the Tony and Tolbert pick to end your draft for sure. Dak's my quarterback. Uh, my running backs, DeAndre Swift and Josh Jacobs. Whiteouts, Debo Samuel, Jalen Waddle, DJ Moore, and then Brandon Cooks in the flex. With depth of Cordero Patterson, Lazard, Valdez Scantling, uh, Devontae Parker, my tight end is Austin Hooper. The the one guy I thought, Jay, maybe you'd consider him because just the, the build of your team and you're just going complete upside here uh, for your last pick. Thought maybe you'd think about David and Joku. Yeah, like, I, I, I don't, yeah. we normally don't draft two tight ends, but when like Cole Komet seems solid for what he's going to give you. But like David, David and Joku, David and Joku could be the number two target. Absolutely, for the and Browns. he would have been my pick here if I had waited to the last round to grab tight end. I'm not going to double up the tight end. I just don't. Okay. I don't want to play those dirty, dirty games. What makes it difficult is you know Watson is four to six games, if not more. So I think when Njoku may actually spread his wings, you will have dropped him. I think that's a highly Possible, potential yeah. situation. But shout out to Sleeper for hosting this mock draft and all of our mock drafts. And uh, our leagues. Yeah. And our leagues and things of that nature. Now, before I close us out, I'm just curious whose team Kyle likes. Mm. I mean, we do we have polled him recently, and maybe we'll stop. But uh, Kyle, do you have any gut reaction to any of these rosters? In this highly competitive mock draft. Who drafted Trey Lance? Okay. All right. (laughs) That is going to be the end of today's episode. (laughs) The loyalty. It's uh, it's rich. We'll be back with another show on Tuesday. Shout out Brooks, Al, Kyle. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.